Have you seen my latest birthday card ideas video using some of the release of Simon Hurley with Ranger and Spellbinders? In that video, I mentioned that there are tons of other stamps, dies, and stencils in that release, but I wanted each section of those products to have their own video. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel, and in today's video, we're checking out background stamps and different ways to use them. I'll also be sharing more of the new products from Simon Hurley collaborating with Ranger and Spellbinders. Let's take a quick look at the background stamps that I'll be working with today. These are the stamps that I'll be using today. This is the Peel Apart Rubber Background Stamp Flowering Mandala by Simon Hurley for Ranger. The center peels out if you want to, or you can use the whole stamp together. If you're having trouble finding that one, please sign up for notifications. I know they will be back. This is the Kaleidoscope Flowers. There's a whole row of flowers you can peel out, and then there's a single flower that you can peel out as well. And last but not least, I'll be using the Moroccan Tile Background Stamp. Now let's Let's jump into different ways to use those background stamps to really make them shine. When using a peel apart background stamp, I put the whole stamp on the door of the Misty and then peel off the part that I'm going to not stamp. So I peeled out the individual kaleidoscope flower and I'm going to coat the whole piece of cardstock, which is six by six with an anti-static powder tool, and then stamp up the rest of that stamp without the one flower with some Versamark ink. Once that's done, I'm gonna cover all of that with some white embossing powder. Again, this is always hard to see, but I can see in real life that the entire stamped image is covered with that white embossing powder. And then I wanna heat set it until it's all melted, make sure every bit gets heat set and melted and then cooled. And then I'm gonna trim that panel down to about four by five and a quarter. I'm working on some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock, and then I'm going to use the Sketch Marker Aqua Brushes. Now, I used these in a video before, and I really love them. They are so easy to apply a watercolor effect to cards, and this is one of the easiest way to do it because the lines from the heat embossing resist the watercolor. So all you have to do is lay down some color on that flower and then use the water brush that's included to move that color around. And you can see how smoothly it moves around. I'm not coloring in the entire flower, I'm just adding little bits here and there around the flower and inside the flower. And you can see that the watercolor really moves very smoothly, it blends out really beautifully, and it's really easy for me to create an entire rainbow of watercolor looks on these kaleidoscope flowers. So again, this is a very quick and easy way to add some watercoloring to cards because you don't really have to do very much. The walls of the embossing powder, once they're heat set, really keep the watercoloring inside those images. Again, just a really easy way to create a watercolor panel. And the peel apart stamp allows you to leave that open space that we'll use later when we turn this into a card. Another way to use background stamps is to combine them with stencils. And this set, actually, there is a flowering mandala stamp available and also a stencil. So I'm gonna share how to use the stencil to color in this mandala in a lot of different colors. So I first stamped it in black ink on some white cardstock. And since I'm just going to be ink blending, I didn't have to use any specialty cardstock here. But you can see that the stencil comes with several layers that you can peel out, use individually, use together, so that you can have different colors on all of the layers of the mandala. So the center and then each ring as it goes towards the outside can be its own color. So I don't know why I started with this ring. <laughs> it just so happened it was the one that I grabbed first, but you can see I'm masking off the center of the mandala and the outside of the mandala and using the stencil for that inner ring of the mandala. And now I'm going to mask off the entire inside of the mandala. That's what I love about these stencil sets. They actually come with masks as well. So instead of just getting the stencil, you get an entire mask set too that you can then use to 
create different colors for each of the different rings. So you can see I'm using Simon Hurley's Roar ink right now. And so I am going to obviously create a rainbow. Each ring is going to be a different color and I'll be able to mask off the other rings while I work on the ring that I'm working on. So very easy to use. I'm just putting some pixie tape under the masks to hold them in place. I decided I wanted these colors to pop even more. So I'm going to use some color pencil and I'm not going to color in the entire image. I'm just going to pick pieces of each of the rings to color in. So I have some darker pinks on the outer edge and then I'll use a little bit of a darker yellow on that yellow. And again, just using some colored pencils over ink is just a way to make parts of that ink blending pop a little bit more. I felt like the mandala is so beautiful and detailed. I really wanted more of the details to pop off the background. And this is a really easy way to do it because it's just coloring in. There's no blending that you have to do or worrying about lighting or anything like that. It's literally just coloring like you would in a coloring book. So these are really fun pencils to use over inks. I like the smoothness that they have and the bright color and it's opaque enough that it covers up the ink underneath of it a little bit. So you can see, especially with the blue in the center, I hadn't colored any blue in the center and I wanted that very center to be a nice bright blue so the pencil really helped there as well. Last but not least, I did want to add a few accents of white gel pen. Again, this just helps make those details of the mandala really pop off the background. So it's such a beautiful detailed stamp that I didn't want all those details to get lost in just blending ink over them. And these are really easy ways to make them stand out. So in that first panel, we used heat resist with watercolor. Now we're gonna use it with lunar paste. This is a lot of fun. Now you can obviously lunar paste a background and then heat resist over it. I've done that before, I love the look, but I wanted to see how the heat resist acted with the lunar paste. So I'm going to stamp and heat emboss with gold embossing powder, the Moroccan tile background. And I just think that that gold Moroccan tile background on its own is absolutely beautiful. I'll have to do another card just with that as the background because it is so pretty, but I did want to pop it up a little bit. So I decided to use some of the Prom Queen Lunar Paste and an ink blender with a domed foam blender on it. And I'm going to go right over top of that gold embossing powder. And I'm just going to ink blend with that lunar paste right over it. So normally what you would get if you did the reverse, if you ink blended with the lunar paste first and then embossed on top, you're gonna see a lot more of the gold stand out against the pink. Whereas this is going to be a little bit more of the pink and the gold is just going to resist a little bit. So I found that some of the gold embossing powder was getting covered up by the lunar paste and I wanted some of it to pop a little bit more. So I just used a dry cloth to wipe it away and check this out. I love this. It almost looks like a brocade or something. It's just such a gorgeous look. Another way you can use these background stamps is to use them with Simon Hurley's stamping foam. So I'm going to take the circle stamping foam out of its background and I'm going to heat set it until it's kind of pretty warm and then I'm going to flip it over and press it into the Moroccan tile background. And now you can see we can create the reverse of that image. So I'm going to just spread a little bit of ink on that background. So I have three different colors there and then I'm going to spritz it very carefully with a little bit of water. I don't want it dripping. I just want to kind of reactivate those inks. And then I'm going to press it down on an A2 piece of white cardstock and just make sure that I get a bit of pressure all over that stamp there and check that out. Just a totally different look by using the stamping foam to get the reverse image. I've used pounced lunar paste before, right directly on cardstock. So I wanted to see what it would do on the stamping foam. So I'm just pouncing on a rainbow of lunar paste, and then I'm gonna spritz it 
carefully again once or twice with some water, flip it over, and then stamp it down. So this was absolutely amazing. I love it because not only you get that rainbow, not only you get the reverse effect of that Moroccan tile, but you also get this shine from the lunar paste. But who's to say you always need to use color? What about using the peel apart background stamp with gray ink? I'm gonna place a six by six piece of white cardstock in my original size Misty. I'm gonna peel off that one strip of flowers. Now you could use that strip alone and create a rainbow of flowers or just anything you want. I'm going to use what's left over and I'm going to stamp it up with Simon Hurley's Shady Ink. Now. I don't do a lot of this just plain gray background, but I really wanted a gray and white background that we can add color to later. Now that we have a whole bunch of backgrounds, let me share how I'm gonna turn them into cards. So let's take that gray and white background and add some color to it. First, I'm going to cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And you can see I have a nice open white space that's perfect for a sentiment. So I'm gonna use the Butterfly Kisses stamp set from Simon Hurley, and I'm using one of the sentiments there, and I'm gonna stamp even the sentiment in colorful ink. And I have kind of a gradient of color between an orange and a pink. I'm going to do the same thing with a couple of the butterflies. So I stamped the inside of the butterflies first or the color layer first and then I stamped the black and white. You can do it either way. I actually found stamping the outline layer first is a little bit easier. I don't know why I went backwards this way but instead of stamping the bodies of the butterfly this time I decided to use a gold pen and then I'm just going to pop up these colorful butterflies on that background. You can see there's plenty of space for that sentiment and for the eye to rest there, and then a lot of color added with the butterflies. The watercolor background already had plenty of color, so I'm going to just trim that down to four by five and a quarter so I can mat it on some white cardstock that is an A2 size piece of white cardstock. And then again, I have an open space from that peel apart background. This time I'm going to take another sentiment from the Butterfly Kisses stamp set that says, I cherish our friendship. I'm gonna add that and then call this one a day because I love the colors that are already on that card. I'm also going to trim down the heat embossed with the lunar paste so that I can add that to a gold background. I'm going to add some anti-static powder tool to a piece of vellum and I'm gonna stamp the sentiment thinking of you again from the Butterfly Kisses stamp set right in the center of that vellum. Trim that down to be a long strip so that I can wrap it around the card. So it's kind of like a band around on the card and then all I have to do is put adhesive behind the sentiment and on each of the tabs that wraps around the card. You won't see that adhesive at all but it will hold that band in place and I did emboss that sentiment with some gold embossing powder so the pink and gold really just shines on this card. For the flowering mandala where we used stencil and stamp and then some pencils to color it in, I trimmed it down the mandala is going to fall off the card on the right hand side so that I can mat it on some black cardstock. Really also helps to make those colors pop off the card. And then I added a sentiment strip that says Hello Beautiful from that Butterfly Kisses stamp set. Again, have the Butterfly Kisses out. I'm going to stamp the outline stamps this time of two different butterflies. And I'm going to treat that background with some anti-static powder tool and stamp these outlines in Versamark ink so that I can heat set them and have them be gold outlines. I thought that would be really, really pretty. Then I put them back in the Misty and I'm going to use the interior stamps to color them in and I have a couple of different colors on each butterfly and when I'm trying to avoid a harsh line, I usually just wipe my finger across the stamp so that it just softens that line up between the two colors. For the bottom butterfly, I'm gonna stamp it all in yellow and then I'm going to add some orange to the bottom. Again, I just kind of brush the ink pad from the middle towards the bottom and then use my finger to soften up that harsh line. This time I am going to stamp the butterfly bodies. So I have just a couple of different colors. I'm using pink on the bottom this time and yellow on the top to kind of mix it up. And then I'm gonna use the Spellbinders dies that they collaborated with Ranger and Simon Hurley to create some dies so you don't have to fussy cut those butterflies out. I'm stamping the sentiment with black ink right in the center of that 
ink blended stamping foam image. And then I'm going to pop up some butterflies. Now, in the original, I did kind of brush some gold lunar paste on the edge. I ended up not liking it, so <laughs> I changed it to a white cardstock background for a much cleaner, simpler look. For the lunar paste stamped stamping foam background, I am going to stamp and heat emboss one of the outline butterflies on vellum, and I'm going to add some glitter gold embossing powder. So I'm not going to stamp the centers of this butterfly. I'm just going to stamp the outline and then heat set it. And this embossing powder has both gold embossing powder and glitter in it, and so it just really shines on that vellum. And I'm going to use the dies to cut out the vellum. I'm going to use a sentiment on top of that circle of stamping foam. I'm going to place a piece of foam tape right in the center of the butterfly. And then I'm going to fold up the wings. So you really don't see the foam tape behind the butterfly. And it is just delicate and vellum with the glitter. And it just pops off that lunar paste rainbow background. Like I mentioned before, I think these mandalas are going to sell really fast. So if you're interested in checking out some of these supplies. They'll all be linked down in the YouTube description box below the video. As always, I want to thank you so much for stopping by today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. So today we're going to, so today we're going to look at those, so today we're going to look at background stamps. One more time.